Every week we have a Bible study on the lessons for the coming Sunday, and I always ask the same question. What strikes you about these lessons? And this week, one of our Bible study groups said, there's a line in here which just bothers me. And maybe you caught it today as well. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Doesn't that sound weird? I mean, we talk about God's unconditional love, so what is this if doing in there? You're my friends if you do what I command you. So we really wrestled with this. What does this mean? What does this if mean? And how is Jesus trying to control his disciples? <clears throat> well, we came up with an answer that really comes from all the other lessons today. And that is a clue about what kind of commandment Jesus is talking about. I don't know if you remember the game Simon Says. Do you remember that game? Should we play that now? Simon Says, do 10 jumping jacks. <laughs> do 10 push-ups. The whole point of Simon Says is to have commandments that you mess up and then you get in trouble, right? Well, for a lot of us growing up, that is what our relationship with God was like. It was like a giant game of Simon Says. Lots of commandments, and then God just waiting for us to mess up so that we could be in trouble. That's the image of God that a lot of us grew up with, and it's an image of God that is not very helpful, I think, because it really puts us in a very difficult relationship with God. And I think that's why this line bothered our Bible study group so much because it seemed to be a throwback to the God of Simon Says. But what is Jesus talking about here? What are the commandments that Jesus is talking about? It's very simple. It's not easy, but it's very simple. All of Jesus' commandments can be summed up in one word. Can you guess what that word is? That's it. It's not jumping jacks. It's not following all kinds of arbitrary do's and don'ts, rules and regulations. It is simply and profoundly love. It's simple, but it's not easy because love means sacrifice. One of the things we talked about in our baptism class a week ago was that there are some conditions in this baptism, right? We believe that God has unconditional love already for all of these kids. We're, we're really celebrating the fact that God has made them and loved them and will love them for their whole lives and will bring them at the end of their life into heaven. That's, that's a given. But there are some things that we are supposed to do. There are some terms and conditions that apply when it comes to baptism. And it's all about how we live out this life of love. And love... Another word for love is sacrifice. We are inviting these children, inducting them into a life of sacrifice. Think about that. Think about your morning today. You didn't have to come to church, right? There's a lot of other great things you could be doing on a Sunday morning. You're sacrificing your time to be here. And then when you come to church, we don't stop with that. We say, hey, by the way, now that you've come to church, that's great. But we also want you to give money, <laughs> right? We want you to pledge and support the church. That's sacrifice. And then, way more than that, we want more than an hour on Sunday. We want a lot more of your time. Judy Marchioni over there <coughs> wants a lot of your time in about a week. When we have our SOS Lighthouse Week, we feed, it's going to be 65 people, we're going to feed them four days during that week, we're going to prepare the food, <clears throat> shop for it, prepare it, we're going to deliver it to Pontiac, we are going to live a, an act of love, of sacrifice to help others. That's what this baptism is really all about. It's not about guaranteeing them a place in heaven. I believe God loved them. He wasn't going to send them to limbo or hell. It's about inviting them to live the rest of their lives 
oriented, not selfishly, but in service of others, right? Jesus said, these are the only commands you need to know. Love God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Care about others more than you care about yourself. Focus your life on serving and helping others. And I'll let you in on a secret. We think about that as being this giant sacrifice, right? Oh, man, wouldn't it be great if I could just be selfish all the time? I mean, to be honest, I'm pretty selfish a lot of the time. But wouldn't it be great if I could just be selfish all of the time and never feel guilty about it? But you know what? I've known some people whose lives were all about that. I've known some people who were narcissists or self-absorbed, selfish people. And guess what? They are not that happy. Because the more selfish you are, the more you're grumpy about how things don't go your way. The more your whole life is frustration that people aren't doing what you want all of the time. A selfish life is a miserable life. The secret that God invites us into when we focus our lives on love is that caring for others is the secret to happiness. Being outwardly focused is what brings us, ironically, the most fulfillment, joy, and blessing. So we're not condemning these kids to a life of misery, sacrificing in service to others. We're inviting them to a life of deep fulfillment and joy in the service of God and all of God's people. And when we do that, we're also renewing our own identity as God's people. We're gonna make the same promises, renew those promises that their godparents are making on their behalf. We're going to remind ourselves that our deepest happiness and fulfillment comes from obeying Jesus' command to love. To love God with our whole self to love others as God's beloved children, and in so doing, to experience the profound, transforming love of God in our own lives. Amen.